Folks, I want to tell you guys a story today, and I hope that I'll do justice to this. It was just yesterday when I ran into somebody that I never expected to see. Let me leave you guys with that little bit of a cliffhanger right there. Who could it have been? Well, folks, I hate to burst your bubble, but you're never going to be able to guess. I'm sure your mind is probably like, yo, was it this person? Or maybe it was. It's guaranteed to be nobody that you think that it is. And this is a person that I never had an issue with. This is a person that I genuinely liked and respected and had a decent little you know, interaction with during the time that I dealt with this person. And with that, you would imagine that when seeing this person, it would have been awesome to be able to reconnect. Yo, hey, what's good? But unfortunately, it was none of those things at all. And in fact, it was absolutely uncomfortable. Sort of like, sort of like how this probably is right here. Like two people have told me they missed the close-up, so that right there is for y'all. Now, unfortunately, I wanted to be able to share this story and let you know right from the gate who it was that I ran into yesterday that I never imagined ever seeing again. But I can't. I gotta leave that cliffhanger for when we get to it, and the build-up and the suspense should be pretty entertaining, or at least, at least I hope so. Oh, and by the way, real quick, as we get into this, you're probably like, Joe, this isn't a prison story. I thought you said you was going to get back to some prison stories. This is kind of, kind of a prison story. And just wait, just wait for it. So this week has been a little, a little different than how it usually is. My wife has been off of work for the last couple of days because of the fact that just Monday we started, well, we really got into round number three of this IVF. We did the transfer on Monday and like 10 days from then we find out if this worked. And I'm really praying and hopeful that it will this time. Third time's the charm, right? We're hopeful of that. But with the fact that my wife took a couple of days off of work to try to take it easy, you know, one thing that I've been able to do with her is take her with me so that she can pick out things for inside of the house on this flipper house that we're working on. She is the interior designer on this house. She's picked out the backsplash tile, the tile on the floor, the vanity, all the hardware, she's picking out pretty much anything that's gonna make this house look, look the part. That $110,000 part, I mean. So with all of that, just yesterday, me and her would go over to the house, she would look at the bathroom, what all has been done over there because of Brian. Special shout out to what Brian has done over at that house. And there were some things that we needed to pick out. We needed to pick out hardware for the vanity, the sink and faucet set for the vanity, a mirror for over top of that, a light for over top of that, a light for the bathroom, the floors, the color of the house. My God, there's a whole lot of things that we still need to pick out, but we were only going and getting the faucet for the vanity, the mirror, and the light. And we would go to two different places looking for these items, first Home Depot and then Lowe's. And it would be at Home Depot, what used to be my favorite home improvement store before Lowe's won me back over. Lowe's, if you're listening to this video, holla at your boy. We could most certainly use a little more than that military discount if you get my drift. <laughs> and we're not even getting that because if we wore, that would be stolen valor and we're not about that at all. But you know, we could, we could really use some help Lowe's. So, you know, sponsorship, I don't think that should be too far out of the out of the question. But again, we go to Home Depot first and Home Depot doesn't have as good of a selection on you know, niceties for your house, accessories for your house, as I feel like Lowe's does. And also, Lowe's prices are just a little bit lower than Home Depot's are. Maybe that's why they're called Lowe's. See what I did right there? I mean, it legitimately, probably, is really why they call it that. I never, never even thought about that. We're at Home Depot and we are not finding anything except for high prices. And with that, I really hate going to a home improvement store and not picking up anything. Especially when it's cold outside and you got a heavy jacket on like I did yesterday and you're just walking up and down the aisles eventually to be walking out of the store with nothing in your hands. Because I always feel like, I always feel like I look like a certified pluck. And for those of you who don't know what a pluck is, a pluck is like the equivalent of a John in the dope game, which means you are a customer who most likely consumes the meth rocks or the crack ones. 
I hate going to a home improvement store and not getting anything because I feel like I look like a certified user when I'm walking up out of there. And it's even before I walk out of the store, it's all while I'm in the store when I know I'm not gonna be getting anything. So when I'm in that moment, you'll be passing sales associates, hey, can I help you? And they always ask you if they can help you when they don't got nothing in your hands. And maybe that's like, you know, something they teach people immediately upon getting a job at a place like that. That's the first hook they try to throw out there as not so much a means of trying to be helpful, but possibly trying to feel you out to see if you're stealing something. Excuse me, sir. Can I help you? Had a little too much to eat at lunchtime, it looks like, or did you steal a six-piece DeWalt set? <laughs> Get the car started, I'm coming! I'm Anytime you're walking by a sales associate in a home improvement store, Lowe's or Home Depot, and you don't have anything in your hands, they are eyeing you down. Like a dude's gonna eye you down up inside of a Barnes Noble store if you a female in there by yourself. Excuse me, <laughs> how you doing? I couldn't help but to notice you're reading Fifty Shades of Grey. I've actually got a set of Kegels at my house. So anyways, because when you're in these stores and you don't have anything and the salespeople are eyeing you down, at least that's the way that I feel, maybe I'm overtly paranoid I probably am. I'm always trying to talk very loud and very vocally about what I'm looking for that they either don't have or I haven't found yet. I sure wish I could find some affordably priced light fixtures in here, but we are in Home Depot, not Lowe's, hence the fact it's not really affordably priced in comparison. You know, I try to make it very apparent as to why I don't have anything in my hands or in the cart. And I'm not stealing, okay? I just look this way. I just look like a pluck. So as my wife and I are getting ready to leave from Home Depot yesterday, you know, we're walking toward the front of the store, we're coming up some aisle, going toward the front of the store. We don't have anything. The anxiety is already kind of, you know, kind of hitting me like, damn, I'm, I'm about to walk out the store with nothing. I know all eyes about to be on me like that Tupac song, and I'm not stealing. So just stay calm, stay cool, Joe, don't look suspicious, and always remember, you're living the right type of way these days. You're not young Joe. You're old Joe, and you'd probably tell something if you had to. Now you know. And like G.I. Joe used to say when I was a child, knowing is half the battle. Especially when what you know you're telling to the police. You're halfway home. If you haven't hit the like button on this video yet, please do so. I belong on a stage somewhere in a comedy club. I'm good, gifted, if I might even go so far as to say. We're heading toward the front of the store. We're walking, me and my wife, power walking like two old broads up in the mall at 9.45 in the morning with them big old X-ray vision, UV ray protection sunglasses that they need to wear inside of the mall. We're walking. And as soon as we get ready to break the corner, in fact, it happens as soon as we do break the corner, I would see somebody. I would make eye contact with this man who in turn would make eye contact with me. And this guy looked super familiar. And when I made eye contact with this dude, me and my wife power walking, and we break the corner, I see this guy. And when I see him, I'm like, and he's just walking in the store minding his own business and his eyes come up to meet mine and he has that moment of recognition as well. It's almost like that movie Brokeback Mountain is what it's almost feeling like. Now the crazy thing about all of this is, is when I see this dude and I recognize him, that's the look right there of either recognition or you've just been caught and he recognizes me in return. I'd be lying if I told you that I, I recognized exactly who he was. And in fact, I had no idea who this man was. I just knew that I knew him, but I could not place him. Where in the f did I know this man from? Now, even with all of that being said, I'm immediately trying to recognize and decipher who exactly this dude is as we are getting closer and closer toward each other. Because at this point, we are walking head on. We're like the Titanic in an iceberg. We are bound to meet eventually. So as we're getting closer, I'm like, yo, who is this? Why does he look so familiar? And he immediately says, hey, 
Mr. Guerrero. Now when this man says this to me, the immediate initial thought, and I hate the way that this is gonna sound, but folks, it's just been brought to my attention that I am somewhat, and again, I hate the way this sounds, I'm somewhat famous, sort of like Cardi B or Justin Bieber. I'm a, I'm a celebrity, you know, and it's not easy to be a celebrity, especially a broke one like I am lately. So, you know, with the fact that I've just recently had this revelation that I'm famous, you know, I mean, it happens at least once or twice a year where somebody will walk up to me and be like, yo, hey, oh shoot, Josh from Lockdown 23, no, 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 hey. <laughs> no, not me. I'm actually the other guy, you know, the more irrelevant, not relevant, the more irrelevant uh, guy after prison. Oh, 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 you know Josh though? Hey, if you know him and you see him, man, tell him I said what's up though. Hey, tell him it's Ben. Tell him I said it. I actually just met a fan of after prison show named Ben. You know, like once or twice a year, somebody will come up to me and they'll recognize me or either mistake me with like either, you know, lockdown or, or Wes Watson. I've had that happen like 40 times already. And I only say all of this because, you know, as I'm seeing this dude and we're having this little moment, this broke back mountain type of moment, you know, I'm thinking to myself initially, maybe this is just someone who recognizes me from after prison show. Maybe it's just a fan. But when they say Mr. Guerrero, I immediately, re like immediately, that goes out the window, head first, done, Psh, 10 stories. What was that movie? Something the night, something live by the night, something like that with Joaquin Phoenix in it. He actually ends up being an undercover uh, narc. And in that movie, he's going to set up some drug dealers or something and they find the wire on him and he like straight just dives through the window. He, they're like, yo, what is this? What is this? And he's like, hey, 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 plate glass window right there. Hey, hey. <laughs> Three stories. That's what a snitch will do these days. They'll dive through some windows to save their hind parts. And Takashi 6 now want to come home? <laughs> when this person says, Mr. Guerrero, I immediately realized right then and there, this ain't no fan of After Prison Show, maybe they are. But I still don't realize who this person is. So I'm still steadily walking toward this person, arm extended. Hey, how you doing, Bob? Hey, it's, uh, you know, how's the how's the Labrador Retriever? But anyways, I'm walking with toward this guy, arm completely extended. Hey, what's going on? How the wife and the kids doing? Yeah, you know, I'm shaking the hand of what is at this time a complete stranger. Ain't no stranger danger right here. We are all up dapping it up. And it wasn't until skin touched skin and we made that initial dapping contact that I immediately recognized who this person was. Oh, shoot. And also, something else to mention, as I'm walking toward this person trying to play it cool, I'm still dealing with a little bit of that anxiety of walking out of Home Depot with no merchandise, unless they think it's under my jacket, which it's not. I don't have a six piece DeWalt set, hidden, tucked away like freaking, like Blaine, whatever the magician's dude's name is. So I'm trying to play it cool, but it's probably starting to seep through to the surface that I'm a little, Suspicious acting. Wow, hey, yeah, wow, hey, yeah, shaking the hands and all. And as soon as we shook hands, I realized immediately who it was, folks. It was not anybody that you probably initially thought that it was. And, and in turn, it was my probation officer, or at least my former probation officer, my last probation officer that I had. A very cool guy, a guy that I told, hey, I'm quitting my job and I'm going to go be the next, the next K-pop or the next the next PewDiePie, I'm, I'm quitting my job and I'm gonna pursue YouTube. And after he got done hysterically laughing, I said, well, you know, comedy is a part of my shtick as well. So you can see why I'm doing this, but it turns out it worked out for me. This was my last probation officer, folks, who I was running into in Home Depot. What are you doing in here? They don't sell the handcuffs or the piss cups in here, though they probably should as much stealing goes on up in here. Here he comes walking in here. He recognized me immediately. I took a little longer to recognize him. And now I'm even more nervous. Forget the fact we walking out the store with no merchandise and that all eyes are probably on me doing this, but now so also are the eyes of my former probation officer. Maybe he's coming to do a sting operation up in here. Operation Six Piece Home Depot, no home free. No, no sliding into home base, you're out of here. Maybe it was a sting operation while he was up there. Hell, I didn't know, but now I am only that much more nervous. I want to tell you the real story with all of the facts, and I hate 
that I'm going to include this part in there as well. But I am. As I'm telling you guys that I'm seeing this dude and we're like, hey, what's up? How you doing? Like real quick in passing. This conversation wouldn't last very long at all. I mean, this was just a conversation in passing as we were passing each other. And I'm nervous, right? Because I don't know who it is. Then I do know who it is. And I'm leaving from Home Depot with nothing in my hands. Super nervous. Probably straight up looking the part as well. Yeah, hey, gosh, hey, man, wow. Wowzers, God, you're the last person I, how you doing? How you doing? Shaking the hands. Even though I'm super nervous and probably acting like a straight up pluck to the third power cubed, a pluck cubed, so also is this former probation officer that I had. He is super nervous too. Like, wow, I'm the last person he ever expected to see up at Home Depot. Probably makes sense because I ain't got nothing in my hands, so I'm probably stealing. I can't imagine how many people he has to violate per year for that charge right there, stealing out of Home Depot or Lowe's. But he's super nervous because boom, I just broke the corner and all of a sudden one of your former parolees is right there in your face. It's almost like a, uh, like a prison guard running into a former prisoner. Not every time is that going to be a very comfortable situation. So he's nowhere near as nervous as I am, right? But it definitely catches him and takes him aback a little bit. He's like, whoa, hey, hey wow, 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 you ain't got no merchandise. I'm not surprised. So that just adds to this whole awkward exchange. You know, we're going to like shake hands. I'm trying to dap him up. He's got his hand extended. I'm like, yo, uh, pound, uh, el how about a hug? Hey, bring it in here, big fella. Very awkward exchange. And I don't know what he was so nervous about because in all honesty, and he wasn't really all that nervous. He was just a little bit. He was super nice, super fair. He did his job. He didn't ever cut me any breaks, even though I was and still am famous. You know, he, he treated me the same way you would treat anybody else. And I just never expected to see this guy yesterday. And, you know, I was so messed up by this. I'm getting into the car with my wife, and I'm still messed up, itching and scratching. Gosh, oh my. You know who that was? You know who that was? That was my old P.O. That man used to. Used to have the power to lock me up. Now he can't do nothing. He couldn't have done nothing if I really did have that six-piece DeWalt set. We got an unboxing video coming a little later on today. Uh, not going to tell you exactly what it is, uh, but it is cordless. Little little clue. Yeah, he could have done nothing right then and there because he don't got the power that a cop has, even though some POs think that they do. You're, I don't think they do. I could be wrong. I just never expected to see this guy. And by the time it was all said and done and I'm sitting in the car and we're getting ready to leave from Home Depot to go to Lowe's where we actually bought some things, we found some things for, again, the low. So I felt silly. Like, why was I so embarrassed or ashamed or nervous? I had no reason to be. Because this video has been so silly, it's probably not going to be taken as seriously when I tell you that, you know, I probably still deal with some things I know I do, and I know a lot of people do as well. You know, you're, you're going to carry with you, probably for the rest of your life, uh, underlying issues that might not surface all of the time, but only in certain situations will they surface. And those issues will come from serving time, especially serving a lot of time. So maybe that's got, you know, a lot to do with it right there. But, you know, the damnedest thing about the whole situation is, is I like this guy. And had I not been so nervous and so suspicious acting and so, uh, like, whatever, I would have really liked to have a conversation with this guy. Because he did ask me, you know, how am I doing? And all I was able to muster out was, I'm doing good, I'm doing good, I'm doing good, I'm doing good, I'm doing good. I really would have liked to have been able to tell him about felon flippers and about... You know, trying to still put people to work. And everything that we've done with the After Prison Show since I've gotten off of probation. And though I, you know, I didn't get that opportunity to tell him about all of that stuff. He does know about After Prison Show and whether he's, you know, followed it every single day or caught up with it, you know, every couple of months or whatever. I'm quite certain he's going to be taking a look at it or already has taken a look at it since running into me again. And I do truly hope, you know, that he gets the opportunity to see this video. Where I've kind of cracked some jokes about him, but it is what it is. I've, cr I've cracked way more about myself. But if I could speak to him, speak to you directly, Mr. Old Probation Officer, I'd like to say, you know, it was really cool getting a chance to see you again yesterday. I wish I could have talked with you a little bit longer. I don't know why I was so nervous. It was awesome getting a chance to see you yesterday. I'm doing really good. And I hope you get a chance to check out what all has been going on with the After Prison Show. Because, yo, we've been doing a whole hell of a lot. 
Folks, I wanted to share this story with you. I hope that you enjoyed this. If you did so, please leave a like and a comment letting me know exactly what you think about all of this. How would you have responded? And until next time, enjoy life, the free world. Never take a moment for granted and make the most of every day. Peace! Thank you.